Hello students, welcome back to your computer science class. I am Mrs. Jenny Shah and today I'm going to continue with the journal programs explanation. We did eight programs last class and uh, we've done a few before Fibonacci series. Uh, I will do, but we've done a few before. So I think I did the Fibonacci series with you all. Yeah, Fibonacci, we did prime, we've done. Um, strong number, we did perfect number, we did. Now, write a program to print the sum of the series. Now, this is a little different program, okay? One plus x, uh, one plus x1 upon one factorial plus one plus x2 upon two factorial up till n. Now, over here, n will be given by the user. This is an exponential series. So you can do these kind of programs in Python too. Let's understand how we have done it. Now, x equals to float input. Sorry. x equals to float input, enter the value of x. We enter the value of x. y equals to integer input, enter the limit up till n. So whatever n will come, it will come from here. And this value, value of x over here. x and n, we are taking both from the user. s equals to 0. s is our result or sum, whatever. For i, this is my loop control variable. For i in the range 0, up, comma, n plus 1. n is the input given by the user, n plus 1. Factorial equals to 1. For k in the range, 1 comma i plus 1 factorial equals to factorial into k. So over here we are calculating the factorial. And then s plus equals to that means I'm uh, adding s plus equals to that means I'll keep adding one series to it and then again add new series to it and another add third series to it. So I'm going to take only one of this term and put over here. Minus x raised to i upon factorial of i. Now, the reason I have minus over here is if minus 1 is there, minus minus will become plus. Okay. So, plus equals to minus x raised to i. So, this, this part, sorry, this part x raised to 1 is here upon factorial of 1. So I will be one for the first time, second time it runs, I will become two, third time I will become three. Like that, this will keep on increasing. I will keep on increasing. So X2 will become automatically, X2 will come, X3 will come, X4 will come, it will keep going till X10, and whatever is the N. Okay, so here is the answer, value of X was two. Enter your limit and then you got your answer. Now this was a pattern series. We've done so many pattern. I've done so many pattern programs with you already and I had even shared where you can go and learn about it. So I'm not going to sit and explain it in detail. But this is very interesting. So I will teach you. I equals to one. I'm giving value to I until my I is less than three. Then I take J. Okay. And J becomes one until my J is less than I that is less than three. I'm running. Print J comma i and then i increase the value of j so j first time becomes one then it becomes two and then it becomes three so in my first line j is printed one time second line j is printed two line because it's row number two okay and last line j is printed three times because it's row number three and j keeps increasing itself after it's being printed it increases after printing it increases after printing it increases and when it goes to the next line automatically j is initiated to 1 again. Okay, so over here i is the row count and j is the column count. Okay. Write a program to, ex to accept a string and display whether it is a palindrome or not. Very interesting program, palindrome of a string. So we take a string from the user, we are looking at the length of the string p equals to length minus i, index equals to 0, while index is less than p. If the string in the place of index equals to string in the place of p, index equals to index plus 1, p 
equals to P minus one. L three is not a palindrome. Break. So we are what is happening? We are taking two variables. Length and P is palindrome over here. Okay, and then we have index, and we are checking if the string in the place of index and the string in the place of P equals to equals to same. If it is same, then we are saying string is not a palindrome. Otherwise, string is a palindrome. Okay. Next one, write a program that counts the number of alphabet digits, uppercase, lowercase letters, spaces, and other characters in a string. This I have changed and asked in the examination. Some of you had taken ready-made answers and given it to me, and they were wrong because they were only calculating half of what we actually needed. Okay, so. I'm just going through the questions because these are the questions you all should know. The ones that I feel are difficult to understand, I will explain you. Write a program to accept a string and return a string having first letter of each word in capital. You can use title also over here. You can use the title inbuilt uh, method, which will automatically make the initial of every word capital. Easy way out. First letter of each word capital, we can use title. Write a program to remove all odd numbers from a given list. You go through the list, you're going to check each and every number. If it is odd, we are going to remove it. Otherwise, we are going to leave it. Write a program to display the second largest element of a given list. So you look at the list, you find out the maximum element, and then we are going to check if that element is greater than maximum or not. If it's greater than maximum and less than the minimum, you keep searching till you find it. So over here, second max is L in the space of zero. And we are checking if I in the range of I, in the range of L up to length N, if the L in the space of I is more than second max and less than, okay, the logic over here is, there is a list and this, let's say, uh, in the list of 10 to 50 in any random order, 50 is the largest number. Let's assume it's in the second last position, 10, 20, 30, 50, 40, assuming it. Now, we took 10 as my second largest. I'm just, I'm just assigning the first element to this variable called second maximum. So 10 is being given and then I'm going to check if, the second place, that means the element in the second place is bigger than this. If it is yes, then now I'm going to replace the second largest as the second number, 20. Then I will again search, is 30 larger than this? Yes, then I go there. Is 30 larger than 50? No. Is it larger than 40? No. So 40 will become my second largest. So second max element, we are going to, we are going to compare it is more than the second max and less than the maximum, then we are going to display it. Write a program to display cumulative elements of a given list. For example, if the list is 10, 20, 30, 40, it should display 10, 30, 60, 100. Cumulative. Okay. So what have they done over here? Are they adding something? I think the question is wrong somewhere. Next one. Write a program to display frequencies of all elements in a list. Very interesting one. So how many times a number repeats itself in a list? So we have to give a frequency of it. So you can see a list over there. And then there are two other lists, list one and list two, which are empty. So for I in L, if I is not in list two, X equals to L dot count, 
l1 dot append l2 dot append okay so and finally we are going to print l2 and l1 l1 l2 is basically the element itself and l1 is the frequency the number of times it comes we are putting it in l1 so there are two lists we are making one with the elements and one with the frequencies program 18 write a program in python to display those strings which are strings with a a of given list i'm sorry Write a program in Python to display those strings which are string with A of given list. Basically, if uh, A is there in the list or not in that word. So if I in the place of zero is there in A, A then you have to show it. Write a program in Python to find and display the sum of all values which are ending with the three from the list. So you are going to use the place value method and you are going to look, look over here. Modulus 10 equals to equals to three. So if the last number is three, then you are adding it to the sum. These are the two most important. Everything else you can easily figure it out. Write a program to shift the negative numbers to left and positive numbers to right so that the resultant list will look like this. Yeah, this is difficult, but still easy to understand. L in the place of J plus L, in, we are just interchanging it like you can see over here. Is topi uske sir, logic is happening over here of two variables. Remember interchanging of two variables, this is the same piece of code right here. Okay. A list number contains the following elements. Write a program to swap the content with the next value divisible by seven so that the resultant array will look like this. So in the num in the place of i divisible by seven, if it's true, again is kitopi we are just exchanging the two places. Next, write a program to accept values from user and create a tuple. Okay. So over here I have a tuple, and then we are entering any number. And then uh, we are taking the number from the user and remember. T plus A parenthesis and you have to put a comma. This is how we add to the tuple. We have done this. Write a program to input total number of sections and stream name in the 11th class and display all the information on the output screen. Okay, so over here we are taking a dictionary, empty dictionary. Enter the total number of sections in the 11th class. So that would be my N, uh, then enter section, enter stream, class uh, 11th A ratio B, I plus one. Finally, over here, I have it, uh, class 11, section 11 A, stream science, uh, class 11, section 11 B, stream, stream commerce. This is just making a dictionary. So this is how you add to a dictionary. We have done this piece of code. Write a prog Python program to input names of n countries and their capitals and currency and store it in a dictionary and display it in a tabular form. Also search and display a, a part, also search and display for a particular dis uh, country. It's a very interesting one. Let's do it together in one of the Zoom classes. That's it. We don't have MySQL. So over here, this ends. Okay, we've completed this entire journal. You all saw how challenging and difficult programs can also come. But like you all saw, we have the solution with us. We only need to sit, read and understand. With this children, I end today's class with you all. Next class onwards, we are gonna be meeting on Zoom. I expect you all to come uh, to keep your pie charm or uh, whatever you are using ideally or spider or anaconda, whatever. Keep it open so that when we are discussing, you're able to side by side solve it. With this, I end today's class. Stay home, stay safe, take care, keep learning. Thank you.